The Ellipse, Chapter 10, Section 3. So an ellipse is the collection of all points P in the plane, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points called the foci, F1 and F2, is a constant. The vertices V1 and V2 are located at the intersections of the ellipse in the major axis. And then you can see also that there are co-vertices that are on the minor axis, which is the axis uh, perpendicular to the major axis. So main thing here is what that is saying is that the distance from one focus to the other focus created by two line segments that go from a focus to a point on the ellipse and then to the other focus. So from focus to a point on the ellipse to another focus that no matter what way you go to get there, what, what path you follow and reflect and go to the other one, that the distance will always be the same. And this is where I talked about those whisper rooms that basically if someone is sitting at the focus of a room with an elliptical ceiling, then every sound they make at that point will have the same distance from them to the other focus. So if someone else is sitting at the other focus, all of those sound waves, no matter what direction they go, will recombine at that other focus in phase, meaning that they traveled the same distance. What happens in acoustics is that if things travel, if all of your sound travels the same distance or a multiple of the wavelength, then it will arrive in phase and you'll actually get louder sound. If it does not arrive in phase, meaning if it covered a certain number of wavelengths or cycles or periods to get there going one direction, but then it doesn't cover the full a full period to get there through another direction, then you get canceling. Think of sine waves because that's really what acoustics are and what, sa what sound waves are, they're sine waves but they're sine waves at different frequencies. So that's why with this, it's important that the distance be the same. Because if you just have a set frequency sine wave, then all you have to do is make sure that the distance between one point and another point are a multiple of that sine wave, of the period of that sine wave, and then it will always come in phase. The problem is you can't, do that for all frequencies because their periods are all different. Whereas with an ellipse, the distance that it covers to go from a focus to a point on the ellipse to the other focus is always the same distance, not a multiple or anything. It's always the same distance. So no matter what frequency you have, it is going to arrive at the other focus in phase and you'll get the highest volume. Other places throughout this elliptical room would not be able to hear the sound as well because they would have the cancellation effect. So, let me get rid of that laser pointer and start looking at the equation for this. So we're gonna get, just like we did with the parabola, we're gonna start with the center at the origin Notice we don't have, our vertices are two different points now. They're those two points that are on the major axis. So we deal with the center and the center is at the origin that keeps everything balanced. The major axis along the X axis, which basically just means that an, an ellipse looks kind of like an oval, right? So think of it as the longer dimension of the oval or the ellipse is the major axis, the shorter dimension is the minor axis. So we're gonna deal with the major axis along the x-axis. The equation of the ellipse with the center at zero, zero, foci at negative C zero and C zero. So your foci are gonna be 
see away from the center along your major axis and your vertices at negative A0 and A0. So your vertices are going to be A away on your major axis. And then you see that your minor vertices, sorry, your covertices will be B away along your minor axis. And the formula for this is X squared over A squared plus Y squared over B squared is equal to one. Where A is greater, is greater than B is, equal, is greater than zero because all, dimension, all the dimensions obviously on this have to be their distances. So they have to be positive. And B squared is equal to A squared minus C squared. Okay, so I'm gonna point out a few things with this. First of all, notice that B squared is equal to A squared minus C squared. Basically, if we think of what this is doing, we should be able to recognize that the distance from the minor, the, sorry, the covertex to the focus is the same as the distance from the center to the vertex. Now, why do I say that? Well, if we think about what's happening here, this distance has to be the same. Look at it this way and go, well, what happens if I go from the one, the one focus to the covertex to the other focus? Well, that's going to give us a certain length, right? Which is going to be 2a. Now, if I look at going from the a focus to a vertex to the other focus, right? That's another way that it can do it. It can bounce off a vertex near a focus and then go to the other focus. That's gonna be the same distance, 2a. Well, what, what'd you do here? We did double this. We went across this once and then we came back and did this whole thing here. So we have that distance plus that little distance. And then we continued to the other focus, this little distance here, if you took it and put it over here, that would be the other part. So we see that A must be the same length as the distance from the center to the vertex. So we create that. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out. The second thing I wanted to point out is that in this case, A is the hypotenuse. We're very used to dealing with Pythagorean theorem and having it be a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Remember, variables are just that, they're variables. They can be used for anything. So even with the Pythagorean theorem, a does not necessarily have to represent a side, b represent a side, and c represent the hypotenuse. Any value can. So in this case, it's actually b squared plus c squared is equal to a squared. So when we solve for b squared, we get b squared is equal to a squared minus c squared. So just be careful of that because we're so used to using the Pythagorean theorem in a certain way. Don't just automatically plug values in. Now, how does this change if we have an ellipse centered at the origin that the major axis is the y-axis? Well, it doesn't change a heck of a lot. You'll see that centers at zero, zero. The foci are now at zero negative C and zero positive C because now they're gonna be moving up and down. And the vertices are at zero negative A and zero positive A. And you see that our co-vertices are now at negative B zero and B zero. It's still got that triangle there, but and we're, b squared plus c squared is equal to a squared. And our formula just becomes x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared is equal to one. Where a is greater than b is greater than zero. And b squared is equal to a squared minus c squared.
Now, what I want to point out with this, well, what's the difference between the equation on this one and the equation on the other one? They both had x squared over something plus y squared over something is equal to one. But notice that the a squared, that longer one, always matches the major axis. X squared is associated with a squared in this one because the major axis is the x axis. B squared is associated with y squared, which is the minor axis. In the new one, x squared is associated with b squared because that's now the minor axis. And y squared is associated with a squared, that's the major axis. Okay, it really doesn't matter which order you write this in. You could write this as x squared over b squared is equal to y squared over a squared, or you could write it as y squared over a squared plus x squared over b squared. Doesn't matter the order as long as you associate a and b with the correct value and correct x and y. So that's if we're dealing it with it at the center at the origin. But of course, we're going to modify that and say, well, what if the center is not at the origin? What if the center is at the point HK? Well, then that's going to shift things. And first of all, our major axis is now going to be parallel to one of the coordinate axes as opposed to being on a coordinate axis. So if we have the center at HK and the major axis is parallel to the X axis, so it's going to be longer than it is tall then we're going to be shifting h and k and we're going to be shifting the focus i by h and k so we'll have foci at h plus c k and h minus c k the vertices will be shifted by h and k so h plus a k and h minus a k and then the equation will also deal with that shift so we have x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to one. And still a greater than b greater than zero and b squared is equal to a squared minus c squared. If we're parallel to the y axis, same shifts, starting with the same equation that we had for if the major axis was the y axis. So our foci will still shift by h and k. So we get h k plus c and h k minus c. And our vertices will shift also by h and k. So h k plus a, h k minus a. And the equation becomes x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared is equal to one, where a is greater than b is greater than zero. And b squared is equal to a squared minus c squared. OK, now something you may want to keep in mind with this is remember that the foci deal with C. There's a C in, vo in foci. So C is, is associated with foci in this. And then the vertices, yes, I know it has a C in it, but I look at it as V is an upside down A. You flip over V, it looks like an A. So A is associated with the vertices. So I'm just trying to give you a little something to use to remember where A and C go. So your focus focus has C, your vertices, you flip over that V, it looks like an A, deal with A to help us use the, the correct values. So let's get to work on this. Interpreting, interpreting the equation of an ellipse, find the center, foci, and vertices of the ellipse. So we have Y minus seven squared over 25 plus X plus eight squared over 16 is equal to one. Well, we know that A is greater than B is greater than zero for an ellipse, okay? Because A is the, gonna give us the distance from the center to the vertices, and B is gonna give the distance from the center to the co-vertices, A is longer than B. So we look at this equation and we look at the denominators of the two rational functions in there, we see 25 and 16. Those represent a squared and b squared. It's up to us to determine which is which. So 25 is five squared, 16 is b squared, sorry, is four squared. 
So the larger one is going to be A, the smaller one is gonna be B. So if five squared is greater than four squared, then A is gonna be equal to five and B is equal to four. So we've got something in the form Y squared over A squared plus X squared over B squared. Well, Y is associated with the larger value with, with A, therefore the major axis must be parallel to the X axis. And we say parallel instead of being the X axis because we see we have Y minus seven, X plus eight, which means that we have a center that is not at the origin. So if it's the major axis is parallel to y, the Y axis, we have B squared is equal to A squared minus C squared. So we can start looking for C, our focus, which is gonna help us find the focus. So C is equal to the square root of A squared minus B squared. So we start plugging that in. So the square root of five squared minus four squared, five squared is 25, four squared 16, 25 minus 16 is nine, the square root of nine is three. Now, some of you may have noticed five, four, three. This is a basic three, four, five triangle. So I could have with that realizing that A was the hypotenuse, I could have just quickly said, well, if, A's, if the hypotenuse is five, one of the sides is four, the other side has to be three. Three, four, five triangles are used quite often to help figure things out. In fact, the old televisions used to be a ratio of four to three. They were, they were the length, or the I should say the width of them was a multiple of four and the height was a multiple of three. So the diagonal would have been a multiple of five but it's also used in construction. You'll see people, you guys have done a bunch of math. You'll see people who haven't done hardly any math that will be using three, four or five triangles. That's how they can verify that they have a right angle because they'll just go and they'll measure three feet along the one side, four feet along the other side, and then they'll check the diagonal and make sure that it's actually five, that it's five feet. And if it is, they know they've got a right angle. So the center of this, as I said, I've got y minus seven, x plus eight. We know that's gonna be h, I'm oh, sorry, y minus h squared on the top on the one side and x minus, sorry, y minus k, I keep saying the wrong letters. y minus k squared on the one side, x minus h squared on the other side. So h must be negative eight, and K must be seven, so our center is at negative eight, seven. Since we know that C is three, we can find our foci. So that's gonna be at negative eight, and then we're gonna take seven plus or minus three because the major axis is parallel to Y, so we're gonna add and subtract it from Y. So our foci are at negative eight, four, and negative eight, 10. Our major vertices, we're gonna take the center and and subtract a, which is five from x and y, sorry, from y. So our major vertices are gonna be at negative eight, seven plus or minus five, or negative eight, two and negative eight, 12. The minor vertices are gonna be found by taking b and adding and subtracting it to x. So minor vertices are gonna be negative eight plus or minus four seven, which gives us negative 12, seven and negative four, seven. So starting with this equation, we were able to pull out A, B and C, whether which axis, which axis it paralleled for the major axis, the center, the foci, the major vertices and the minor vertices. You know, to pull all of that out of the, this equation, which can make it really easy for us to graph it because now we have all those points. Now let's go the other direction, find the equation of an ellipse. So find the equation of the ellipse described, graph the equation. So we have the foci at zero plus or minus three 
and the length of the major axis is 10. So what can we pull from this? Well, the foci at, are at zero plus or minus three. So I pull a couple things out of this. First of all, I see that Y is changing for the, fo for the foci, which tells me that this is parallel, that the major axis is parallel to the Y axis. I also see that the foci are at zero plus or minus three. Well, if the foci are both at, if the X value is zero for both, and then obviously for the center, X is equal to zero. But if, it's, if they're at plus or minus three, that means the foci for Y are centered around zero also. So the center is at zero, zero. Okay. It says the length of the major axis is 10. The major axis is length is two times A. So A must be 10 divided by two or five. Remember the major axis goes from vertex to the other vertex. So the distance from the vertex to the center is A. The distance from the center to the other vertex is A. So the length of the major axis must be two A. So if we have the length of that axis, then A is equal to half of that. So A is equal to five. Our foci were at zero plus or minus three. So therefore C must be three. So that leaves us needing to look for B. B squared is equal to A squared minus C squared, or B is equal to the square root of A squared minus C squared. So we start plugging in. So is equal to the square root of five squared minus three squared which gives us four. Again, this was a three, four, five triangle. I didn't intentionally do this. I just kind of did. So realize that not all of these are gonna end up to be the perfect three, four, five triangle. In fact, you're gonna see things that are not pretty at all. But that's the way it turned out here. So now that we have, we know the centers at zero, zero, we have C and we have we have A, B, and C. We already had the foci, but having A and B, we can now find the major vertices and the minor vertices. Since it's centered at zero, zero, that makes it really easy. So the major vertices are gonna be at zero plus or minus five, since A is equal to five and we're parallel to the Y axis. And the minor vertices will be at plus or minus four, zero, because that's gonna be perpendicular. So it's gonna be parallel to the X axis. So that's going to just move by B. Now, putting the equation together, we've got, we have our center, which is H, which gives us HK. We have A, we have B. So we have everything we need. We know that if the major axis is parallel to the Y axis, that A is going to be associated with Y because it's going to be associated with the major axis. And B is going to be associated with X. So we're going to use the formula X minus H squared over B squared plus Y minus K squared over A squared is equal to one. And now we start plugging in the values. The center is at zero, zero. So we have X minus zero squared on the top on the one side and Y minus zero squared on the other side. B is equal to four. So B squared is 16. A is equal to five, so A squared is 25. And now we can simplify this. And notice that this was an equation with the, the center at zero, zero. And I didn't start with the standard, the simplified equation that we had for that. I just used our standard equation that will allow the, the center to be anywhere. And when we plug it in, those zero, if it's the centers are zero, it's going to simplify out and we're going to have X squared over 16 plus Y squared over 25 is equal to one. So I don't need to have formulas for center at the origin and then other formulas for center elsewhere. I can use this formulas for centers anywhere at HK. And if the centers at the origin, they're just going to disappear you're gonna be subtracting zero, which doesn't do anything. 
So now if I want to graph this, I'm gonna move the pertinent information onto the next slide. So we have x squared over 16 plus y squared over 25 is equal to one, foci at zero plus or minus three, major axis parallel to the y axis, center at zero, zero, a equal to five, b equal to four, c equal to three, major vertices at zero plus or minus five and minor vertices at plus or minus four, zero. So I'm just gonna start putting them in, okay. So, My foci, where are they? There we go. My, I had to find where it was on the screen. So my foci are at zero plus or minus three. So I plot those. My center is at zero, zero. My major vertices are at zero plus or minus five. My minor vertices are at plus or minus four, zero. And then I'm going to create the ellipse. Now I'm going to point out the same thing here that I did when you were graphing um, trig functions. Whenever you go through a vertex, you are going to be going through that either vertically, vertically or horizontally. So make sure you're flowing through with that. Don't draw a diamond. Draw an ellipse. And if you make sure that as you go through a vertex, or a minor vertex or a major vertex that you are going either vertically or horizontally at that point in time, that's gonna help you to get a relatively smooth curve and get something that looks more like an ellipse than a diamond. But we can see that from these pieces, we were able to come up with the equation and the graph of an ellipse. And yes, by this point in time, I decided that it was worthwhile to actually have the computer create or use the computer to create an ellipse for me as opposed to drawing it by hand because it would have looked horrible trying to use a mouse.